Okay, so we just got back from a camping trip, which I'll be posting many videos on. One of the things I'm doing is reviewing campsites and campgrounds, because I know that was one of the harder things for me to be able to research and to get decent information on whether my rig, which is a tongue to tail 29 and a half foot to 30 foot long trailer, plus a full size King Cab pickup truck. So, you know, they say they're pull through sites, but we found that that's not always true. Uh, they can be pretty tough sometimes. Other campgrounds we got into and, uh, you know, they're claiming gorgeous sites and they're slapping you in there inches away from each other. So I wanted to camp to review not just places but campgrounds to give you more information to help you out so you don't get into a spot that you can't get in or out of because we saw people on this trip who were in a mess, a real mess. So, we hope this helps. Okay, so this review is for Fish Creek Campground in Glacier National Park. If you're going to be going to Glacier National Park, you need to watch this. And especially if you're staying in Fish Creek Campground. It's a nice location. It's right next to Apgar Village, which is a great village right on the lake which I'll have another little video on. It has boat rentals and it's gorgeous there. However, in Fish Creek Campground, there are definitely sites you do not want to reserve if you're not in the right kind of unit. If you've got RVs, some of them aren't good. If you are in a truck and trailer like ours, they're not good. There's one site that I didn't put on here, 152, because there was someone so jackknifed up in that site that they were having major issues trying to get out of it. Uh, and they had a small trailer with a full-size truck. Uh, and I didn't want to embarrass them, so just know D-152, you better have a small unit, and I recommend only RVs in D-152. But this is a review of loops B, C, and D, and you need to watch this if you're planning on staying there. Also, if you are going into any of the national parks, especially the ones we were in, Glacier, Bryce, Zion, Yellowstone, then you need to know how the reservations work and you need to be in your computer the day the sites come online which currently for Glacier, Bryce and Zion and Capitol Reef it's six months to the day from the first day of your reservation you can reserve up to 14 days. Yellowstone changed. Yellowstone is now the first day of the month, one year in advance of the month that you're going to stay there. So you need to know that because I didn't know at the time I reserved it was nine months in advance because they just changed from six months and luckily I only had one spot in the entire Yellowstone that would fit my rig and I was very lucky to get the one I got. So you know, remember you need to be there at 8 a.m. the morning the sites go online if you want to get a site. Oh yeah, and that's 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So adjust your time accordingly. Also, we got into the National Park, like we get into all National Parks, for free. Which are typically $25, $35 per car. Plus, we camped there for half price. And how we did this is in my book, How We Save Money While Traveling, which I will tell you more about at the end of the video. Okay, so I'm starting our campground review for Fish Creek Campground, Loop B. This happens to be our site. We got actually pretty lucky when I saw some of the other sites here. We uh, back up down in the, over that ledge there is Fish Creek. And you can hear it when the wind isn't blowing. Right now the wind's blowing. The pines are rocking so hard that they're banging against each other. Very interesting phenomenon. The one thing about this though is I could not with, we have a 26 foot box, 30 foot overall length in our truck, and I could not pull through even though it is a quote unquote pull through site. I had to back back out, go to the other end and back the trailer in to get it in here. But the site is quite level and has enough room for the truck, so not a bad site overall. And we are in B, 
8080. So B79 is a fairly level site as well. And this one actually looks like you could possibly pull through. I don't know if you have to back in or not. B82 is a nice site. It looks pretty level. And this one, you definitely can pull through this one. B81 is fairly level. And it's wide enough coming in that you probably could pull in, but pulling out could be possibly a little tricky. So you might have to back it back out. If you're talking a trailer like ours, a motorhome wouldn't be an issue, but it could be a little tricky getting out of 81. 83 does have a bit of a little bit of a downslope, not too bad, but it looks nice and definitely could pull in. And I think you could probably get back out of it. Now, 84 has a pretty good downslope to it, and it gets pretty tight. So, uh, motorhome maybe, but leveling it would be a lot of fun. And it's tight getting in and out of there, this one. I would stay away if you have anything bigger. 85. 85 is a nice, level, more level site, and it looks like a pretty fairly easy in and out although getting out might be a little tight um, not too bad 86 has looks relatively level it's fairly long and I think you could probably get in and out of this one as long as these trees aren't too tight and your units not too big but not too bad 87 is a fairly nice site, fairly level. Looks like an easy in and out. 88 is a good one. It looks like pretty easy in. However, you have this one tree here that could make it possibly a little tough getting around the corner to get out. So it might be a back in, back out, but if you're not too big, probably shouldn't be too much trouble. 89 here. Very easy. In and out. And looks pretty level. And 90 is a back end site. Not overly deep. So you'd have to look at the website to see how deep this is. It's wide enough for your unit and your truck, which is a good thing. 91 is fairly level, not a bad sight. Looks like a pretty easy in and out. So this is a good one for a larger rig, 91. Now coming into B loop, 36 is the first one. It looks like it would be possibly a tough pull through. You can see this unit isn't overly long and I'm sure they had to back this in. And it's pretty tight in there with their slide out. They had to do some planning on that one. 37 <clears throat> easy in and uh, it gets a little tight on the exit here. So you might have a problem getting out unless without backing out. Now, 38. 38, you don't want to touch unless you're a tent camper because there is one heck of a slope on 38. So you don't want to touch that one if you can just plan on sleeping in your unit. 39 has another back in. It's relatively deep wide at the mouth but it does have a pretty good upslope to it so leveling your unit it could take some work to level your unit number 40 is could get tight 
I think this would be a pull in back out type of thing or a back in but it's not too bad level wise actually if you don't have to go too far forward if you have to go up forward then they get some slope to it 41 is relatively level as long as you can stay in this part of it um, but it get raises at the end and it'd be definitely a back in or pull in back out 42 is not very level at all uh, looks like you could actually pull in and out of it but if you can get your unit to crest on the top in just the right place from side to side it needs some work now 43 Looks like it could possibly get through. It's got, it's kind of a pumped sight. 44 definitely has slope to it. I wouldn't want to try to level this sight. And 45, you have a smaller unit. It's okay. Uh, it's humped, but you can probably get to a point where you can get that leveled. 46, you don't want to have anything to do with it unless you're a tent camper very very sloped 47 looks like a fairly easy in and out it does have a grade to it so you might have a pretty good time leveling that now 48 it's a smaller trailer and it was very tight for them to get into it um, not too bad level wise 49 again you don't want everything to do with it unless you're a tent camper same is true with 51 site 50 has got some slope to it but I think it would be okay especially if you're pulling your if you have a trailer because you can just take the tongue way down on it and looks like you could possibly get in and out without having to back in or back out. 52. I wouldn't want to touch it unless I was a tent camper. 53. Probably the same thing. Either a very small unit because it flattens out a little bit at the top. But it's still got a pretty good slope to it. 54. You don't want to touch it. Unless you're a tent camper, at least I wouldn't. 55 still has some slope to it, but uh, and so it could be okay, and probably could get in and out of it. But depending on the size of your unit, 56 has got some slope to it, but I think it would be okay, especially if you're in a trailer. Campers, it's got some. It'd be a little tougher in a motorhome. But you could definitely get <clears throat> into it fairly easily. And getting out shouldn't be too bad. 57. Looks like it could be a fairly easy in and out. Has an uphill slope. Again, with a trailer, probably no problem. With a motorhome, you'd have to do some real leveling. 58 looks like it just runs right into 56 so you know, almost it looks like one campsite um, getting in and out could be a little tough unless you can come through 56 because it's got a sharp curve around this tree and uh, for a smaller unit, it could be it could be okay, but I wouldn't want to try to get something big in here. And you could back in and back it up back by that table there. That could work. And then put your car right here in front of me. 59 goes up a hill and back down the other side. So you'd have to be real careful uh, trying to get in on that one with anything bigger. Now 60 is not a bad sight. Not overly level, but easy in, easy out on 60 for a bigger unit. 61 would be, could be a little tough 
uh, to pull through. It's got a sharp curve to it, so I think this would be more of a uh, pull it in and level it off and park your truck over here. 62, easy in, easy out, except for the dumpster. It's right in your way trying to get out of this thing. So that could be interesting, but not too bad level-wise. 63, again, if someone's parked in, in 64, uh, it can make 63 tough to get out of here if you have to get out while they're there. Uh, but overall, not too bad of a site. You can make it work, but you probably have to back it back out unless you're in a motorhome again. Motorhome, you just pull right on in and you'd be good in the motorhome. 64, as you can see with the motorhome, no problem. With a trailer, you probably have to pull it in, cut your truck hard, park it where this guy is, and then park your car, truck over, where they have their extra car. Now 65 is a handicapped spot, and it's not too bad. It's pretty, it looks fairly easy to get in and out of. Still has a pretty hard curve. A lot of these have hard curves right around trees, which can make them a little bit tough. 66, you can see he's got a good size unit in here. So you can pull that in. Uh, either trailer or truck, it's not too, uh, not too much leveling on it. So not too bad. 67 has a sharp, sharp curve to it. So no pull through on this, you'd have to try to back in. I would say 67 is good for a smaller unit. 76 is not a bad sight. Looks fairly level. You can possibly even pull in and out on this one. If your unit's not too huge, but not too bad. 77 is a good sight very possibly able to do a pull through on here but i would say more likely a back in on this one and that oh 78 i just have to 78 78 has got a little bit of a slope to it so you'd have to do some leveling in an rv trailer you can probably make up for it with a tongue jack but it's definitely sloped downhill and it's a, it would be very difficult pull through with anything close to my size. So I think this would be another back end, which for anything of reasonable size, <clears throat> most all of these are back end. So that's loop B at Fish Creek Campground. Now we're at Fish Creek Sea Loop, C93. It's a very shallow back in. C94 is a nice pull through. You see they have a very large rig in here and not too much leveling actually. So that's a nice one. 95 is a back in which you could actually put something pretty deep into 95. 96 is another tight pull through. I would probably call this you pull in and drop off your truck or a smaller motorhome unit. 97 is not too bad, fairly level, and probably have to back in a larger unit. 98 definitely has a tight wrap around and it's a tight spot. I wouldn't want to put anything in here with a slide out, personally. 99 is a pull through that you could get into, but I wouldn't want to try to get out of it. You'd have to back out with anything of any size. There is actually, you can actually see the lake through the trees here. 
101 is a nice long hole through that I actually think you could have a decent sized unit and pull through. It does have a dip in it, so leveling, uh, you have to get right in the right place so you don't have to do a whole lot of leveling though. C100 is another one of their tight pull throughs with a tree right there, so it's for a smaller unit, definitely. C103 is another nice long pull through that I think you could actually pull through with a decent size unit. C102 is again fairly tight, but it has a long has a long stretch that you can back into, but the sight's still a little tight for a rig with a with a slide out. 104 is another tight pull through, which. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to try to put my unit in here. C105 is a fairly long pull through. However, it has a fairly tight pull out, so you'd probably have to back out of it with anything of any size. 106 is tilted, definitely tilted to the side. Uh, would be fun leveling on this one. It's, you know, not too big of a unit. You definitely could pull through on this one. It has a nice wide pull out, so in and out may not be too much trouble. Your bathroom units are across from 107. 107. Could actually, looks like it could actually do a pull in, pull out with a decent sized rig on this one. Could take some leveling though. But yeah, this one looks like it could handle a, a reasonable sized rig. So 108 is. Mm, Actually, this is a smaller unit with a truck. You actually could put something. I could probably put my rig in here. So it's a little tight, but not too bad. 109 is a pull through that is interesting. It actually is fairly level up on top. And if you move the table, you probably could pull all the way through. It could be interesting. 110, again, is a longer pull through that you could probably get a decent sized rig in and out of because it actually has a fairly wide mouth at the end. And again, you do get peekaboo views through the trees of the lake. You're not very far off the lake here at all. Just a short walk through the trees, which is nice. 111 is another one where you climb up onto a flat spot and this one you could pull a reasonable size rig in but I don't know that how easily you'd get it out so you probably have to back it back out 113 is pretty much the same thing you can get it in but you'd have to back it back out so in this loop, right across from C114, is this short little trail or road coming down to, I don't have any idea what this building is, honestly. And there's a trail through here, walking trail, no pets, no bikes. And actually, here's some of the Rocky Point, half a mile. Rocky Point, 0.7 miles. That's interesting. I guess that's if you do the loop. And you come right down onto a rocky beach, right onto Lake McDonald.
nice little cove here with beautiful waters. Must be a boathouse, and that's the launch. There's another boat. Maybe it's the Rangers patrol boats here. I don't know. But still stormy. It's sunny right standing right here, but still cloudy and stormy over the road that we were on earlier. The C-114 you wouldn't want to try anything but a small rig. C-116 can't do anything too big in it either. C-115 is a pull through that you could potentially actually pull through. And these guys look like they backed in, which might be the easier way to go. C-117 is not a very big site, but you definitely can pull through on it at least. So it's good for smaller rigs. C-118 is a big loop around pull through, which again could be tough if you have, if you pull anything even as big as mine, it would be probably pretty tough to try to pull it through here. I don't think it would work. C119 is a back end site and it's reasonably deep, though it has some low branches. Actually, I think this is part of C120. It's got quite the slope to it. I won't even attempt it without other than tent camping. C-121 has got one heck of a slope. I wouldn't touch it unless I was tent camping. C-122, same thing. Only thing it's good for is tent camping. C-123 is only good for a smaller unit uh, because of the slope to it. It flies up somewhat on top, but like this van, not much bigger than that. Honestly, C-124, same thing, only good for a tent, as is true for 125. C-126, you can actually get a, a rig in here, but it take a lot of leveling. And C-127, I wouldn't touch unless I was in the tent. As is true with C-128. I'm sorry, C-129. This is C-128. 128 could be okay for a smaller unit without a slide out. Because otherwise you're going to be doing all kinds of leveling. 130 is actually, you couldn't pull through here with a larger unit, but you could back in. And he was backing in with a slide out. It'd be a little bit tight, but probably doable. C-131 is a big wraparound uh, pull-through site, which you might be able to pull through with a unit about my size. Otherwise, it's a pull-in back out or back in. C-132. I want to touch with anything too much bigger than this little guy. Because it's got only got a small little flat area and then it goes right straight down the hill. 133. No good except for tent. 134. No good except for tent. 135 is actually doable, but you're going to have to do some front to back leveling on it. Decent size unit. 136 is another tight wrap around pull through. So I wouldn't want to do anything small. I want to do it in my unit. 137 is a decent size pull through which again getting out would be tough so it'd be a pull in pull out but it does have some slope to it 138 i wouldn't want to do anything but a small unit or a tent 139 is another pull through but again 
it takes some leveling and you're gonna have to it's a tricky one I wouldn't want to come in here with my unit honestly 141 would be okay it's got a lot of side slope to it though so it would take a heck of a lot of leveling 140 that's 141, 142. You got a lot of downslope to it. I wouldn't touch it except for in the tent. 143. It's a pull through, but I wouldn't do figure I'm pulling in and backing out or backing in because it's just yeah, you're not gonna pull out of this one. Uh, unless you can come through this where the bathroom is. And make it work that way but even then i don't think you can do it and 146 is yeah, it's got some you're going to do some leveling but you can actually pull in pull out on this one so you can do it with a pretty good size unit so 146 is good if you got a bigger unit so now we're in loop d and d147 is right on the main drag getting in and out but only the D people would come down this far and it's a nice long sight D149 is tight again it would be a back end and I would say only for a smaller unit D148 uh, would take a large RV or you can back in a decent sized trailer um, but the traffic flow goes the wrong way, really, for a trailer. So, but you can back in a trailer this way and get a good-sized trailer in there and then have all that for parking. So not, not a bad spot. While they call these pull-throughs, most of them are not. There's a couple here that I don't want to show them. But they're having major issues right now trying to get the trailer either in or out of their site. Major issues. So that's why I'm doing this for you. D151. Um, actually, a fairly easy pull through. So not too much leveling needed. D153. Little small, little tight. I wouldn't want to put anything too big in here, but not too bad. D155. I'm trying to figure out where the spot actually is. <laughs> it's hard to delineate actually the spot, but it's definitely a back in, in my opinion. And you could back in something fairly decent in size. 156 is a back end, definitely. And I have to look at the site to see how deep. It's reasonable, but nothing overly great. D157 is a very tight hook. So this is not a pull through for anything that isn't small. But you can back it in, but still smaller, really smaller units only. 158 looks like it's a handicap spot, actually. 159 is another tight pull through. Um, got some slope to it, you're going to have to do some leveling on it. It could take a reasonable size unit actually but you're gonna have to back in or back out 160 again is a handicap site so a nice big flat 161 is supposed to be a pull through but it's way too tight with this tree you're not going to pull anything through that so it's a back in um, for something smaller with some slope to it it's going to take some leveling 162 uh, is a pull through. You actually could probably pull through if this water fountain doesn't get in the way. And you are right on the stream here. So this is very nice. 
You can have this spot and listen to the stream all night long. 163 is, again, probably a back end site. You might be able to turn this, but no, not for anything extra large. 164 is a back end site, probably. You have some low branches though, they're gonna scrape on your rig if you come in, but it looks, you have to look at the site, probably 30 feet maybe. 166 is a back end site. If you move the tables and all, 25 feet maybe, you can look at the site. 167 is a is an actual pull through that you can pull through and it will take a large rig. 168 is a back end site that if you come in diagonally you can actually put a decent sized rig in here. And it's not too unlevel. 168 is a back end site uh not too much longer than this van actually so definitely not too big of a unit 170 is another pull through site that is going uphill so you got to do some definite leveling on this one and it actually looks like you could uh, you could probably actually pull through on this with a trailer with a rig my size but I can't guarantee that. 171 is a pull through, but it's definitely a back in if you have a trailer. 172 is another too tight of a wraparound, so it's a back in. 173, if you have a smaller rig, maybe you can make it around. But otherwise, it's a yeah, smaller rig, especially a trailer. And the lake is just down from here. 175 is another very tight pull through. So it's definitely a back end for something smaller. Take some leveling. I don't know. I don't think I try anything but a tent in this one. 174 is uh, I would back in or pull in and pull my truck out or a larger RV as long as you want to back in, back out. 176 is decent. 177 again wraps around too tight. Has to be backed in, backed out. 179 has a big slope to it so nothing bigger than this van. 178 will fit a smaller rig back then. And I'm not sure which site this is. What site is this? This is site 154, and this is a good site. This one actually does look like a true pull through site. Nice long, you can fit a big rig in that one. So I hope this video helped you in picking out a campsite that will actually work for you. I wish I had had this kind of information when I was looking. I did a lot of research, spent a lot of time on the computer in each campground, and still got into a couple of tricky or not as good of sites as I could have had. So be sure to like and share this video along with all the other Travel with Rollar videos. You can find them on YouTube. As you found this, we will be branching off into the other social media sites. We will be covering not just campgrounds, but we will be covering uh, trains, planes, automobiles, national sites, international sites, cruises, you name it. If we do it, we're going to review it. Also, be sure to order our booklet, How We Save Money While Traveling. We've become very good at ways to save money, many ways to save money. In fact, we, as I stated, we get into the national parks for free, camp for half price. 
We recently took a trip to Chicago, just between the train, plane, hotels, and car. We would have spent almost $3,000, but we did it for less than $1,000, all using methods that are in this booklet. Now the booklet does cost $14.99, but if you use these methods and over the first year, if you do not save at least $15, I will buy the book back from you for what you paid for it, so you cannot lose. So please order the booklet. There's no risk there. And by or to order it, just go to travelwithrollr at yahoo.com. That's travelwithrollr, R-O-L-L-A-R, at yahoo.com. And put down that you'd like a booklet, and I will get back with you. We do, we'll, we do take credit cards.